Seen through one-way glass and a layer of chain-link fence, these are some of the detainees of Guantanamo Bay. We're not allowed to show their faces. The authorities here say parading prisoners of war goes against the Geneva Convention, the international treaty that the Bush administration tried to argue doesn't apply to these men. In communal areas like this, the more compliant of the 154 prisoners here are allowed to socialise. They also have access to a small outdoor area where they can dry clothes they've washed or use exercise machines. Their only view is of concrete and razor wire. For those who don't cooperate, it's solitary confinement. And there are other penalties too. In front of you is our basic issue items. On the top is what we offer our compliant detainees. On the bottom is what we offer our non-compliant detainees. Well-behaved prisoners get more books, snacks and clothing options. Those who've broken the rules within the last 30 days have reduced privileges and are made to wear orange jumpsuits. All prisoners use toiletries which happen to have the brand name Maximum Security. And even uncooperative inmates get to watch TV while shackled to the floor. Signs of non-compliance are clear to see. Bodily fluids stain the ceiling where prisoners tried throwing them at guards. Servicemen now use face masks and extra barriers have been put in place between prisoners and staff. The guard force say they deal with such acts professionally and are keen to point out how much conditions have improved over the years. Today they're in camps five and six and those are modern facilities, uh, multi-million dollar facilities, air conditioned with satellite TV, with workout rooms. So a lot has changed in the 12 years for the better. One of the other amenities available to the detainees is a library of books, magazines and video games. The titles are all vetted for suitability before being allowed. I think we do have the Twilight series. Uh, the, the, the book that we have the most um, in different languages would be the Harry Potter series, just because worldwide it's a popular series. They still, the extremist views of some of the inmates can be seen by their own censorship of some images showing women and bare bodies. Inmates are also given art classes, the results of which are on display. The man at the interface between prisoners and Pentagon is called Zach. A Muslim born in Jordan, he's clear about why he never publicly reveals his identity. For my own safety, I don't want to make it easy for the bad guys to come and get me one day. I just want to make them work for it. Zach says many of the inmates are more hopeful now that efforts are underway to close the camps. The mood is much better right now because they have seen action. They have seen the President of the United States you know, talk about Guantanamo many times, how determined he wants to close it. So the mood and the talk is, you know, it's all about transfer, where they're going to go, what country they're going to go to. Nevertheless, there are those who still put up resistance in one of the few ways they can, by refusing food. Doctors here say they have a duty to keep inmates alive, so they strap them into chairs like this and feed them nutrient-rich liquid via a tube up their nose. Despite condemnation of so-called enteral feeding from groups including the Red Cross and the American Medical Association, the doctors say their consciences are clear. I certainly support them in their decision and their choice to um, to have uh, you know, a non-religious uh, prolonged fast, but at the same time, I can't allow it to go to the point where they're hurting themselves. I am absolutely at peace with what we're doing here. It is absolutely safe. It is absolutely humane. Lawyers for the inmates say force feeding is used to deter protest. Corey Kreider of legal charity Reprieve also claims the authorities are reducing access to her clients in various ways. One way that they do this is through the genital search policy. As many as four times to talk to, say, his attorney on the telephone, a prisoner has to stand against a wall and basically be groped. And it's humiliating for them, and sometimes and they just conclude that it's just not worth it. Prisoners' representatives do acknowledge that conditions have improved since the early days of the camp. But for them, the real problem is the bigger picture. Issues like solitary confinement, issues like the kind of physical uh, inhumanity and abuse that existed in the earlier years, I think for the majority of the men now, um, is not really the, the, the main problem. It is the condition of, after t over 12 years of detention without charge, still not knowing whether or if you are going home. Military trials are underway for some men, but ultimately the U.S. argues that as prisoners of war, those kept here don't need to be charged. They'll be released when the war ends. But for the loosely defined war on terror, it's not clear when, if ever, that might be.